Hey everybody, I'm Emily Rose from Reaching Strides Equine Rehab and today I'm going to talk to you specifically about uh, strategies you can use to help you ride the trot better. More specifically than that, I'm going to mostly discuss rising trot today. Okay. This is another uh, Q&A. One of our patron members asked a question about, uh, two, it was two parts. It was about how to get your horse to rate their speed at a trot and at a canter. And then part two was about how do we uh, ride the trot and canter better in order to not be bouncing around and maybe even causing our horse to speed up there. So how do we control our body and then how do we give the horse responsibility to slow down? So I'm gonna answer the first part about getting our horse to rider speed, and I'm gonna bring my uh, wife in, Emily, um, who uh, kind of specializes in rider biomechanics and be, just being able to stay with our horse and ride better. So she's gonna set up this first part, and I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. This is a really important part about riding our horses is working on ourselves, so let's jump into it. So if you've uh, watched any of my videos, you will have watched my first one on how to strengthen your core activate your core for the rider. That's an important topic that we need to kind of come into the rising trot work already having worked on, okay? So we know how to activate our core, pull our belly button in towards our spine, do a Kegel, activate our pelvic floor. There we've got our core working for us, okay? So if you haven't watched that video, please check that one out first before uh, working on this one, okay? So next step specifically for riding the trot correctly in ways that will help you. We have got to be able to separate our pelvis from our trunk, okay? More often than not, I see a lot of riders that move as one, okay? But really, we should be able to separate our pelvis from our trunk while we ride. So I hope you saw the difference there. My torso went with my hips and my pelvis. Here, my pelvis moved independent of my torso. So what I want you guys to do just starting to practice before you get into trotting is sitting on your horse. Can you roll all the way forward onto your pubic bone in the front here? Do you see what this creates in my low back? Kind of creates an arch, right? Then can you roll all the way back on your seat bones as deep as far back as you can go in your pockets and it almost creates this kind of slouching appearance, very rounded low back, okay? So can you go back and forth between these without your shoulders going with? Do you see how still my shoulders are staying? They're not going back and forward. I'm moving my pelvis under there, okay? Once we've got the ability to move our pelvis independently of our torso, I want you to find that perfect middle in between the two, okay? Right here in this perfect middle is your optimal position to engage your core from the first video that I had posted. So you're gonna turn your core on. This is our ideal starting position to be in for the walk and for our trot work and canter. That's gonna be a whole nother video though, okay? So now that we've worked on being able to dissociate our pelvis from the rest of our body, we need to put this into motion of the rising trot. Now I'm gonna do this from a standstill and I'm gonna to have to hang onto my saddle to show you guys this stuff, um, but we'll put it in motion next, okay? So when we specifically think about uh, the rising trot, and let me just tuck this whip in right here so I can have my hands. When we specifically think about the rising trot, a common thing that I see in riders is as they come up out of the saddle, they create this arch in their low back. What happened? Do you guys remember what motion we did that also created the arch in the low back? It was when we rolled way forward onto our pubic bones. So your instincts when you get pushed up out of the saddle are to do that. But we need to reverse those instincts, you guys. And when you come up out of the saddle, we actually need to have the motion of rolling further back onto our pockets or our seat bone. So as that horse, horse's inside hind would push me up out of the saddle, I'm actually tucking under. Like if I was still had contact with a saddle, do you see how much contact I'd have with my pockets and my seat bones? So that horse pushes me up. I tuck under, under, under under. If I'm doing it in sitting, it's under, under, under. See how that is my pelvis tipping backwards. In, in correct biomechanical terms, we call this a posterior tilt of our pelvis. 
this is anterior. This is what we don't want to do, okay? We want to go posterior. So when that horse pushes us up out of the saddle, you think about posterior. One of the best ways I like to describe this too, for people, it's kind of funny. I know a lot of you have probably seen Michael Jackson videos, right? And he does that move where he goes, woo, when he sings. Um, I'm not saying you have to put your hand there and do that, but think about that motion, okay? It's like the Michael Jackson. I've had people call it when I'm teaching them that. So it is a posterior tilt out of the saddle. So let me put this into motion, show you guys a little bit about what it looks like. We're gonna put this into motion now, okay? So I've practiced dissociating my pelvis or making an independent pelvis from my torso, right? You can even see it in the walk work that my pelvis freely flows with my horse as we're walking, okay? But now we're gonna go into the trot. So remember, it's a posterior pelvic tilt up out of the saddle, okay? So let me get my horse trotting. All right, so I'm gonna demonstrate the good for you guys first, okay? So as we're going around, and we'll try and take a slow-mo clip too, and put that in for you so you can really see what's happening in my pelvis. I'm thinking about tucking under a posterior pelvic tilt every time his left hind pushes me up out of the saddle, okay? So now, let me break it down for you guys and show you the wrong way, what you might be inclined to do, okay? So, here I go into an anterior pelvic tilt out of the saddle. And you can see I'm losing my stirrups, my legs are flopping around, it created a bunch of motion in my arms and my hands. My horse is being a saint. But do you see how much arch gets thrown into my low back. My horse is like, that's enough. Let's drop back to the correct motion. I hope you guys can see the difference between the two as I go. Now I know I'm an English rider. I know I'm riding with contact, but this can be done freestyle or a loose rein or bridleless. If you ride bridleless, you can still have the right mechanics at the trot. You don't need your hands for this, you guys. So get out there and practice with your horse. Think about that posterior pelvic motion up out of the saddle in your rising trot work, okay? Another thing that we have to consider to be able to control our pelvis independent of the rest of our body is having our leg in the proper position. So I'm going to show you a little bit about um, some exercises you can do to help align your leg in the right position. I know all of us out there, we ride in different saddles that put our legs in different positions or shorter or longer. So I want to give you some strategies that you can use no matter what saddle you ride in to help find the optimal leg position. So biomechanically, this is what it should look like, okay? We should have a dot or a line that drops through the center of our shoulder, through the center of our hip, and crosses, he thinks there's a cookie, uh, to our heel, okay? If we were to drop a plumb line, that's a line with a weight on it, this should be our alignment, okay? But that's not always easy depending on what kind of saddle we ride in. I'm in a dressage saddle. Dressage saddles are made to really put you there, okay? You may be in a jumping saddle where the it doesn't have these rolls and the angulation is here. That squat position might help you get there a little bit. However, there's not as much holding you in a jumping saddle, so you may have a leg that kind of flops around a little more. You may be in a Western saddle that has fenders that are a little farther forward and puts you sort of in this position, okay? But I wanna give you strategies on how you can get that leg underneath you no matter what saddle you're in, okay? So the easiest way to get your leg underneath you in the saddle is to stand up. You can't stand up if your legs are too far in front of you or too far behind you, okay? So just the act of standing up in the saddle is going to make you pull your legs into the right position underneath you, okay? You can hang on for this, that's totally fine. 
Um, don't pull yourself up with your arms, but for balance, that's totally fine. Okay, once I'm here, to help kind of solidify this position of my leg, what I want you to think about doing is pushing up onto your tippy toes and then dropping deep into your heels and stay standing. Tippy toes, heels. This helps kind of reinforce the message from your brain to your leg about the position it should be in. Once you've sunk down into your heels, what I want you to do is sit without letting your leg pop forward or backwards. Most likely your leg's gonna wanna go forward on the sit, okay? So I challenge you to go from this standing position, work on your flexibility there in the stirrup, sink down and sit without letting your lower leg move from the knee down. So after doing that, I know that my leg is in the right position. You can take this exercise then into motion, okay? As you're So to do this exercise in motion, it's not about balance. You can hang on to the saddle or you can hang on to the pad or to the withers, whatever you want. Um, and this exercise also isn't about the horse, okay? So focus on yourself for this. You've got to have a horse that keeps going though. So we're going to work on standing in the stirrups. Once we find our position standing in the stirrups, we're going to think about the tippy toes into the heels exercise without sitting down on say repetition number 10 for you guys. That's when you'd sit without letting your lower leg move. So as I'm walking around right now, I'm just getting my horse thinking about forward a little bit more. I'm going to stand up. That was really easy for me to stand up. That tells me that my leg was right underneath me. If you stand up and you're falling backwards almost immediately, that means your leg wants to kick out in front of you, okay? So with that happens, you need to activate these hamstring muscles here. The hamstring muscles serve to flex your knee, okay? But you need to think about it in terms of pulling your heel back and down towards that back hoof, okay? So if you, if you feel like you're falling backwards when you stand, think about activating this hamstring here, okay? So once we find our standing position, we push up on tippy toes, we drop down into our heels, we stay standing. Tippy toes, heels. Tippy toes, heels. Let's say that was my 10th time. On repetition number 10, I can sit without letting my leg move. Do you see how I'm nice and perfectly lined up? I think. <laughs> The test, the litmus paper test is, can I just stand right back up? Yep, I could, okay? So now I challenge you to, to keep paying attention to your core while you're doing this and make sure you don't get tight up here while you're focusing on your lower leg position. Once you've kind of worked on both of those, try and put them together. So that's a little bit on how to develop a bit more stable lower leg and correct leg position in the saddle. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them below. I'm happy to get back to you. Thanks for watching.